Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we're making this super sweet water bottle sling. You can make it for child size or adult size, just adjusting the chains for the strap, which I'll tell you all about. You can also make it a lot bigger just by making your bottom circle one round larger. So super adjustable, super cute, and super handy. To make the water bottle sling, you will need yarn. I am using this really nice cotton pastel yarn from Ice Yarns. I've also used natural cotton in the past and also Lorena worsted, also acrylic. Any four weight yarn that you have is fine. I'll be using a five millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a stitch marker, a pair of scissors, and a darning needle. So let's get started. We're gonna start by making a magic knot. So just lay the tail of your yarn over your non-dominant hand. Hold it down on your ring finger with your thumb. Wrap your yarn around two fingers, making an X. Wrap your yarn around all your fingers and just hold that tail down underneath your thumb as well. Flip your hand over so you have one short strand and one long strand. Put your hook hook side down underneath the short strand. Drag the long strand under. Point the hook towards yourself. Relax your thumb a little bit underneath. Turn the hook away from yourself. Grab that long strand, turn your hook, and slip it through the loop on your hook. Chain one, and now we're going to do 12 double crochets into the center of the ring, working over our tail. So 12 double crochets into the center of the ring. I'll link a tutorial for how to do a magic knot in the cards up above, as well as how to do double crochet if you are not totally familiar with it or comfortable doing it. So pause the video and make 12 double crochets into the center of the ring working over your tail. And the chain one in the beginning does not count as anything, that's just going to help fill out our ring. So ignore that little bit at the beginning and just count your posts or your double crochets to count 12. So once you have 12, pull your tail and that'll shrink up your ring. You want it to close up nice and tight but not snap your yarn and just flick that tail over the top of your work and we're going to slip stitch to join. So on our very, the top of our very first double crochet, so not the little chainy bit, this real stitch, kind of tip up your work and you'll see the V. So you want to slip stitch under both loops of that V right there and that'll pull it up and make a nice circle. So put your hook underneath that tail and into the top of that very first double crochet and slip stitch. So grab your yarn and bring it back, turn your hook and bring it through. Now we can go ahead and just kind of tie these together to make sure that that magic knot stays nice and snug. So we'll just do a regular double knot. We don't want to pull so hard that it shrinks your stitch but we also want it to stay put like that. We're still going to work over our tail, but now it's secure. So we're just going to work over it a bit like that and then we can cut it off later. So chain one. So now hold your tail up so you go over it. You can work over it a little bit. And into the very same stitch where we did our slip stitch and chain one, we're going to go back in and make two double crochets. Just taking a bit of care to go over our tail. One and two. And remember our chain one doesn't count as anything for this tutorial. And now into each stitch going all the way around, we're going to do two double crochets into each stitch. So into the next stitch, two double crochets. So pause the video and I'll meet you when you have two double crochets into each stitch for a total of 24. I have one more stitch left to make my two double crochets. So I'm just going to count to make sure that I have 22 done already. I like to just pull my work a little bit to make sure that each of those stitches has two double crochets coming from it. So there's 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pairs of double crochet. So into that last stitch, 
two double crochets and then that is enough stitches for this round. So there's our 24. Now we're going to slip stitch to join to the top of this first double crochet and it's this big V right on this side, kind of on that hill. So we want to go underneath and we want to pick up both strands of that V and slip stitch and that will pick it up nicely. So into the top of that V, push your hook in and slip stitch to join. This is the right size for a 500 ml or 350 ml water bottle. Both of those will fit into this water sling. If you want a larger one, 750 or one liter, this is a one liter size, you want to make a larger bottom by making one more round. So for the one liter, three rounds for the bottom of your water sling and for the regular size, just the 500 ml, just the two rounds. If you're making yours the larger size, for the next round you will make one double crochet into a stitch and then two double crochets into the next and just alternate doing an increase in every other stitch going all the way around and that'll give you 36 stitches for your larger size. To start the sides of our water bottle sling, chain one and now we're going to do back post double crochets. So we're going to be putting in our crochet hook like that. So the very first one is a tiny bit d trickier than the rest. We're going to go in right after that chain one and around our double crochet. So it's a bit trickier, but they're easier after this one. So wrap your yarn like you normally would and we're going to come in from the back side right after that chain one. Right after that little tiny chain one we did. And stretch your work a little bit. We want to push our hook right back out after that double crochet. So we just have the post of that double crochet on our hook. Wrap your yarn and bring it through. And do your double crochet. So wrap your yarn and take off two. And wrap your yarn and take off two. It's a normal double crochet but around the post. So wrap your yarn and we'll go in before the next double crochet and out right after it. So one post on your hook and do your double crochet. And you can pinch your work and look at the back side and all that. You don't have to do it blindly. Wrap your yarn and in right before the next double crochet and out right after. Pinch your work and look at the back side to do your double crochet. And the next one, wrap your yarn in from the back side and out right after that double crochet. Wrap your yarn and finish your stitch. And again, in before the next and out right after and do your double crochet. If this is tricky for you, you can just do one double crochet into each stitch like we normally have been and it will, It'll work out just fine, except you won't have this cute little edge going around the bottom of your water bottle. It'll just be like more of a regular bag or regular basket. But you can still totally do that if this is really hard for you. It's definitely an option. So wrap your yarn and make one back post double crochet around each double crochet of the row below. And I will meet you when you get back to where you started. I have one more double crochet to do here. And then that is our join. So our last one, our last back post double crochet. And now we're ready to join. So we're going to slip stitch to the top of our first back post double crochet. Still that stitch on the hill. We're just going to slip stitch and pull that up. So into that first stitch, slip stitch to join and chain one. You can kind of do a little bit of a bigger chain one, kind of pull up your hook to make a larger, a larger stitch. And we can go ahead and cut off that tail now. You can work it in backwards a little bit if you feel like it, but this is the inside of our water bottle sling and we've knotted it and worked over it. So I'm just going to snip mine off just like that. 
Our last double crochet we did right after our join. We're gonna keep a nice straight seam, so we're gonna skip doing a double crochet into this, into our joining area. And we're gonna go straight in to the second double crochet. So wrap your yarn and now one double crochet into each stitch going all the way around and I'll meet you when we get back to our joining area. So I've done my last double crochet into the stitch. Now we're at this join and remember we skipped over the join. So now we're going to put our double crochet right at that little tiny stitch before our join, just into our slip stitch. So wrap your yarn and one double crochet right into that joining area. Like that. Go ahead, take a stitch marker and just pop it into that, just the side of that stitch. We just want to remember where we did our double crochet so we don't have to go back and look. Our stitch marker will tell us that we did one before the join. So we're going to slip stitch into the top of the double crochet to join. So two strands of that stitch on your hook and slip stitch. Now do a big chain one like that. And now, because we did our double crochet before the join, for this round we'll be doing our double crochet after the join. So that means we're just going to go into the same spot that we did our chain one, our slip stitch, just into this little stitch right here. So wrap your yarn and double crochet into the same spot as your chain one. And now we can move our stitch marker up to just the side of that first double crochet. Just anywhere in there, just to mark that we've done our double crochet for this round. Now one double crochet into each stitch all the way around and I'll meet you at the join. At the end of the round there is this looks like a stitch but that is our join and we did our double crochet after our chain one so we're going to skip over this. So we're going to skip over what looks like a little stitch but really that is just our join. So we're going to go ahead and slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet right there. It's that little stitch right on the hill. So slip stitch into there. and chain one. Now we did our double crochet after our chain in the last round, so we're going to skip the stitch in the beginning. We'll skip that little guy and we'll make our first stitch into the real double crochet right there. So wrap your yarn, one double crochet into each stitch and I'll meet you at the join. So at the join we're going to put our double crochet into that little stitch right before the chain one. So we're just going to alternate what we're doing each row to keep that seam going nice and straight up the side of your water bottle sling. So one double crochet before the join to finish this round and we'll slip stitch to the top of that first double crochet to join. Slip stitch and a big chain one so we just did our double crochet at the end of the row, so we're going to do our next double crochet at the beginning of the row. So right into that same spot as our chain one and our slip stitch. One double crochet. And then go ahead and move that, that stitch marker up. Just going to put it into one of those loops just to mark that we have done our double crochet for this round. And now keep going one double crochet into each stitch all the way around and I'll meet you when you get to the join. Back at the join I'm going to skip that little stitch because we already did our double crochet. I'm just going to slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet to join up this round. Slip stitch and a big chain one to start the next round. And I'm going to skip this little stitch right after the join of the same spot where I did my, my slip stitch and my chain one, I'm going to skip it. We're going to finish up before the join for this round. So jumping straight over into the second double crochet and that's where I'm going to start this round and one double crochet into each stitch and I'll meet you back at the join. 
So back at my joint, I have not done any double crochet action in there. So right before my slip stitch and chain one, I'm gonna do my double crochet right into that last spot. So the very last little tiny bit, one double crochet. Slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet to join this round. And slip stitch. Chain one, and I'll move that stitch marker up just to remind myself that I did my last double crochet right before the join. So pause the video, keep doing this, alternating starting or ending with your double crochet. All the way up, we want a total of eight rows, so we're not counting any of the, the circle at the bottom, we're just gonna count each row going up. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we need to do two more rows, and I'll meet you back. So my eight rows are finished. In natural cotton, it works up, my rows are a lot taller in natural cotton. In this, with this cotton pastel, they're a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna add some rows, and now is a good time. You can kind of pull up your hook and just kind of check your water bottle to see if it's where you like it to be. And then just customize it right here. If you wanna do more rows or less rows, I want to snug it on enough so the bottom of the water bottle sling turns into a nice flat coaster. And then pull it up on the sides. I just kind of do on two sides pretending I'm making handles because it will really yank it up just like that. So just kind of pull it up and judge how many rows you want. I do like to keep the top of my water bottle out of my sling and we do have about one row worth of single crochets to do at the top. So I'm going to do one more row of double crochet for my water bottle. But you customize how many rows you want, but just keep in mind you don't want to go all the way to the top of your water bottle or you'll have to actually dig your water bottle out of your sling. So always make it sure it's shorter and I'll be doing nine rows with this yarn and this bottle. So this is nine rows. Let's see how it fits. That I'm happy with. We do still have more single crochets to do. So that'll add the, about the same height as one row and it will pull up as much as possible on two sides where our handles are. So for me, nine rows is great, but depending what yarn you're using and the height of your water bottle, you can just customize so that yours is approximately looks like that. We can take out our stitch marker and do our chain one. Now we're going to be doing single crochets, so I'm going to skip this join all together. Into the second double crochet, I will start my single crochets. So single crochet, no wrapping your yarn. One single crochet, and into this stitch, that is our first real single crochet, I'm just going to put my stitch marker back just along that side the side post or the side strand of yarn just so I can keep track of where my first single crochet was. We are going to be working in a spiral now so no joining. I just want to be able to keep track of my rows with this stitch marker. So now one single crochet into each stitch going all the way around and I will meet you when we get back to our stitch marker. So we're back to our join where we did our slip stitch and our chain one. So we have a slip stitch and our chain one. We're just gonna go into one of those. So you can make your single crochet in either of these stitches, either your chain one or your slip stitch. I like to go into the first one, I just find it a larger space. So make your single crochet. And then this next little bit here, that we're gonna skip, because that really is not a stitch and then into the next one over. So it kind of looks like we're jumping. If you don't want to jump, you could do a single crochet decrease into both, but I don't find that you need to. And just keep going, making one single crochet into each stitch. I'll just work a little bit ahead so you can see what that looks like. So that is where we skipped that little tiny stitch, and you can see that it does not look like we did, because that really wasn't a stitch. So keep going around. You'll have 24 single crochets per round. 
And we're on our second row, so this, our stitch marker is also going to be keeping track of our rows. So we need to do a total of four rows. So I just started my second. Pause the video until you have four rows of single crochet. There are my four rows of single crochet. So starting with my stitch marker, which is really handy to see where you did start. So one, two, three, and four, or one, two, three, and four. So I've completed my four rows of single crochet. Now we're ready to start our handles. So how we're gonna do that is just making one big long chain that we're going to make up and join on the other side. So if you're making this child size, you will chain 100. If you're making it adult size, you will chain 130. Of course, that's customizable depending on how long you want your water bottle to hang or how high, if you want it higher up. But generally, 100 chains for a child size and 130 chains for adult. I'll be making this one adult size, so I'll be making 130 chains. Go ahead and grab some stitch markers. Chain 20. Put a stitch marker in that 20th chain. And I like to do this with everything laying flat, not moving around, so that I know my chain isn't twisting. And I wanna do all of this all at once. So I've made my 20 chains, and every 20 chains, I'm gonna put another stitch marker. So keep going, making your chain, adding a stitch marker every 20 stitches until you have 100 or 130. So there is my chain, and now you can just count your stitch markers, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 20, and 10. So this is 130, and we are ready to join it on the other side. So take off your stitch marker from your rows, from your join, and skip 11 stitches. You can also just kind of eyeball it if you're more of a freeform crocheter. We start our handle on one side, and we join it on to the other. If you wanna count, we're gonna skip 11 and work into the 12th. So we work, our chain started in this stitch. So the next is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. This one on the other side is 11, and we're gonna join into 12. So I'm gonna put a stitch marker straight into 12, right where I would put my hook now you can make sure your chain hasn't twisted. If you work your chain on a table like I am, it's kind of easier because you know nothing has twisted. But you can just kind of work it flat so that nice little braid is facing up all the way along until you get to your hook like that. Turn your bag a little bit or your sling, and we're gonna go right into where that stitch marker is. So that is skipping 11 and working into the 12th. I'll take out that stitch marker now. And we are going to single crochet to join. So I have some tension here. I don't wanna do a big single crochet. So single crochet, like that. And now one single crochet into each stitch, going all the way along until you reach your the other side of your handle. So we have two stitches left on our bag. So one single crochet into the second to last. And into our last stitch and the first chain of our handle, we're gonna do a single crochet decrease. So you're gonna start your single crochet in the next stitch. So just grab that yarn and bring it through. And now into our chain, this is our very first chain right here. So I'm just gonna be going into the top loop or just the loop on the top edge. So I'm gonna go into this spot right there just with one strand of yarn and we're gonna do our single crochet decrease right here. So put your hook in, just getting that one loop on your hook. Bring your yarn back. So you have three loops on your hook and now you're just gonna wrap your yarn and take off all three loops. So that is a single crochet decrease. And now into each chain, going all the way along your handle, one single crochet into each stitch. And I'm just going in to this very top loop, just like that. If you wanna go into the bottom loop, that's fine also. Just do the same thing all the way along. 
I just find it easier to go into the, just the one strand. So that is what I'm doing all the way up, one single crochet into each chain. And to see my chains, I'm just looking at the top edge of my little braid, just this little loop here. That's what I'm looking for, and I'm making one single crochet into each of those stitches. So your handle will look like this. Keep going, making one single crochet into each chain, going all the way along, and I'll meet you when we get close to the other side. Getting close to where we started, there's two stitches left. So into the second to last, my regular single crochet, and into the next, or the last chain, we're gonna do a decrease again. So grab your yarn and bring it back into the first stitch of the bag. So just down here at the bottom, it doesn't totally matter, don't panic about it. Start your second single crochet, three loops of yarn on your hook, wrap your yarn and take off all three loops. Now get yourself situated into the next stitch, which is right here. I'm going to slip stitch. So just slip stitch to join. Now chain one to secure your yarn. Cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail to sew in with a needle. Pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down. So we can sew in this tail. That side of our handle is finished. We can take out our stitch markers too. So now our bag looks like this. We have one side finished of our handle and the other side we still need to do. So we're going to attach our new yarn. I'm going to attach it right in, not where we started our chain, not where our chain started, but the next stitch over. So I'm going to attach my yarn straight into that stitch. So put your hook in, loop of yarn on your hook, bring it back through and slip stitch with both strands to join. Now drop your tail. We can work over it a bit over the top of our bag here. And into the next stitch, single crochet. And one single crochet into each stitch all along the top until we reach our handle. So there's one stitch left before our handle starts, before our chain. So we're going to do our single crochet decrease. So into this last stitch, we're going to start our single crochet. So just grab your yarn and bring it back. Leave it on your hook. Now kind of turn your work a bit. We're going to look for the very first chain on the handle. So the easiest way to see going back up is just matching these little legs where they go into your chain. So I'm going to go right here. That's the first stitch. And I'm going to put our single crochet right here. So I'm going to start my second single crochet. So there's three loops on your hook. Wrap your yarn and take off all three loops. So that just kind of gives you a nice curve for your handle. And now one single crochet into each stitch going all the way up. And instead of looking for the bumps now, I just look for where these stitches go into. So I look for the legs of that single crochet and I want to put my hook straight into those spaces right where my single crochet was on the other side of the chain. So one single crochet to match every single crochet going up. So keep going, making one single crochet into each stitch where you did your single crochet on the other side, and I'll meet you when you get to the end of the handle. At the end of your handle, it's a bit tricky to see what you're actually doing. It's a bit weird, but don't totally worry about it. We're just going to do, we're going to start a single crochet in here and we're going to finish our single crochet down here. So we're going to loop all that together into one stitch. So start your single crochet and I'm going to finish my single crochet right over where we joined our yarn. And see how that snugs it all together? And then slip stitch to the top. 
Now slip stitch right into that stitch where we joined our yarn and chain one. You can be doing invisible joins if you feel like it. I just feel for water bottles, not really that crucial, but you're more than welcome to. We chained one. Now cut your yarn and pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. Now go ahead and sew in your tails. And I like to get my tail a little down inside the bag just so if it's wiggling around, it's not doing it where the bag is getting a lot of action with the bottle coming in and out. It'll just be kind of hanging out down inside the bag. So there is your super cute water bottle sling all finished up. Go ahead and try it with your water bottle. And there you go. You can see how much it grew just from doing our handle and that extra row of double crochet. And the tip of the water bottle is still sticking out. Our nice straight seam down the side. So cute. Can't wait to go for a walk with this. How fun would that be? So makes a super great gift. Love to see the yarn you used for yours and how yours turned out. You can join us over on Facebook, The Secret Yarnery, also on Instagram, at Secret Yarnery. And we have a Facebook group as well, The Secret Yarnery Crochet Community. Love to see how yours turned out. And thanks so much for watching. Have a super great day. We'll see you in the next video and stay hooked.